Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Dan. We're two guys. One beer. Chris, we have a guest, Steve Gennaro. Welcome to the or, show. Or, as I like to call him, Gennaro. Because <laughs> I keep getting it wrong, but it's Gennaro. Steve Gennaro. Welcome, Steve. <laughs> thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I, uh... I want to get straight to the beer because I'm thirsty. Yeah, we, we've been waiting a little while for this beer. So uh, what do we have here, Chris? So we have Steamworks Brewing Company flagship IPA. It's a it's a North East or New England style IPA, it's an American style IPA. And I heard that they, they make great beers, North Northeast style beers, but we couldn't get any. It was about six months ago I, I started trying to find them and we couldn't find them anywhere. And finally found one in Vancouver, and I asked them to send us something, and this is what they sent us. Oh, wow. Right on. So these guys are in Vancouver. Yeah, all the way across country. And it's only 10 cents? <laughs> it has it on the can. Well, maybe. Maybe that's why they sent them across the country. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Didn't take much to make it. I need to move to Vancouver if that's <laughs> the price. Yeah, so I, I didn't flagship even... IPA. So if it's no good, this is their flagship. Yes. So we, we're, we better like it. Or at least a flagship IPA. Anyway, give it a go. Yeah. Uh, my father uh, used to be a bartender. All right. And my grandfather used to own a brewery, actually, many, many years ago. I'm talking almost 75 years ago. Wow. And what they made was IPA. Really? Yeah, the Dominion uh, Beer Company, which now is actually down on Queen Street, oh. right by the Humane Society, over by uh, Queen and uh, the, the Don Valley Parkway. Really? So you're a fan of beer. You, you, it's in your blood. Um, <laughs> I think both those statements are true, but not necessarily connected. <laughs> I'm a fan of beer. There probably is beer in my blood. Yes. There will be soon. That's there right. will be definitely. Cheers. Soon. Cheers, guys. Wow, you've waited for a while for this. Yeah, is it? I, I love it. That is, that is an amazing flavor. I don't know. It's so I don't know. I know you're 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 not the lover of IPAs, but for me, I don't taste the bitter, hoppy flavor at all. Like very fruity. I was gonna say the, the real sort of fruity flavor coming through there, almost a little bit um, like citrusy, almost a little bit like a, like a Rattler, almost like like rolling yeah. through that more so than. The, you know what, what we usually get from an IPA from the strong bitter IPA. Yeah. It has the instant IPA <laughs> taste for me, okay. but the fruits take over, yeah. and there is none of that uh, after taste yet. I'm not, yeah, no, it, there's no lingering been, going yeah. on. I, I'm not bad at all. No, it's pretty good. No, I, I can, <laughs> I can drink a few of these. That's for sure. I don't know how strong they are, but well, we should probably read that before we get much farther into the show. For the gets the good bit. That's right. Six point seven. Well, that's a good start. We'll, we'll, take, we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. You're a sporting man. You you love sports. I do. Which fits in well with us, because so do we. Love sports. Love beer. Kind of fits in. Yeah, you cover uh, a lot of uh, soccer related stuff. You want to tell us or tell everybody else what uh, what you really do? Yeah, so right now I, I cover soccer, Toronto FC mostly. That's the heart of, of what I do. I've been covering the team for the last two and a half seasons, um, close to three seasons now. Day-to-day, uh, -day, practice, training, uh, games, home, away, that kind of stuff. And I do that with All In Sports Talk, which is allinsportstalk.com. It's a 24-7 soccer radio station. Uh, so it's, it's good. Uh, this year I'm hoping to do some more... Um, Grassroots related projects, very interested in grassroots soccer here in Ontario, in Canada, and even in the United States. So we're very interested in sort of growing the game. And so hopefully have some projects coming this year specifically related to, to grassroots soccer as well. Nice. Well, with everything that's gone on in the last uh, two weeks in Canadian soccer, which a lot has, yeah. um, I think the biggest thing for me is uh, we, we finally have... Uh, a little bit more news about the uh, CPL, the Canadian Premier League. Is yep. that the name they're going by? Yep. That's... We have a commissioner now. Yep. Um, you, you talk about grassroots. I think having the CPL and somewhere for uh, these aspiring players to go, uh, instead of fitting just the X amount of numbers allowed on 
uh, MLS teams or something like or that. The, just, just the three MLS teams, yeah, right? right. It, well, it's that Canadian content yeah. thing with uh, the international rules <laughs> and stuff like that with MLS yeah. that I'll never understand. But they're there. Uh, it, it just gives them, I think, as a nation, gives us more to to root for. Yeah, I think if it's done properly. So this is this is what will happen now, in my opinion. If it's done properly, will, will it will it fulfill its role for Canadian soccer? I mean, it's not just the players. So, if, yes, you have more roster spots, more teams, more opportunities for good young Canadian soccer players to, to, to learn their craft, to grow their game, and then hopefully develop where they can push on to play Major League Soccer or, or elsewhere around the world. But it's also about the coaching. Yes. So you think about now all of these coaches that exist in, in Canada who now have another tier or another level to aspire to. You think about, uh, for example, the executives or, I mean, the, the potential for academies so that there's, you know, youth development that's coming through into these teams. So there's, there's, we're looking at not just, uh, oh, more soccer players can play in Canada. We're talking about uh, jobs for hundreds of people and we're talking about, uh, you know, a lot of qualified, capable Canadian soccer minds mm -hmm. getting the opportunity to demonstrate what they can do. So I think it's really big for Canada soccer. So it, it, you've definitely explained it a lot better than I am. Yeah, could. I was <laughs> just going to say that. It, it, you're right. It isn't just about the the players. But, it, but, yeah. but it is about the players too. Like I know lots of former um, TFC players or Canadian men's national team players who found their way out of the league for a variety of situations, circumstance, injury, whatever it may be. But they're still mid 20s late 20s early 30s who are training in the hopes that the canadian premier league gets up and running really soon and yeah, that will be somewhere for th there's an opportunity run. for them to play again domestically a lot of guys maybe end up overseas in third division or fourth division i don't know scandinavia you know finland or whatever maybe but they want to they want they still want to play here and play at home and this is just more opportunity more right. opportunity is always good you know if you think about it like that for i Canada agree 100 percent uh, i've heard rumors that uh what's his name uh, jimmy brennan yep wants to to coach or be a part of a CPL team. I heard. Yeah, I mean that, that whether it's true or not, it, hey. Apparently he's left his job as the technical director of Aurora, uh, so the Aurora Soccer Club, which is a youth soccer club here in the province of Ontario. Jimmy Brennan has been the technical director there for the last little while, helping them with a the rebrand or, or a change from the I guess they were, I think they were called the Aurora Stingers before and now they're like Aurora FC, so they've become sort of a real true and proper club. Yeah. And they went through uh, just a, not just a rebrand but you know, um, uh, a cleanup in the, in, the, in the structure and organization of the club, really helping it to become a solid professional club from, you know, U6, basically, from the little timbits that are running around all the way up to the highest level. And uh, and they're, they're a pretty good club, Aurora. And so Jimmy was the technical director, which means he basically oversaw all of the soccer that okay. took place there. Uh, and that's a pretty important job. And so leaving that for the Canadian Premier League, there are also rumors that there are some technical directors for some other very big clubs in the province of Ontario who are also looking to find their way into uh, strategic roles with these Canadian Premier League clubs, whether it be as coaches, whether it be as uh, general managers, presidents, etc. So we'll, we'll watch and see what kind of movement there is in, in, in between those sort of Ontario soccer technical directors at clubs and Canadian Premier yeah. League. Yeah, that's great stuff. I like this beer. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't. I, do, I, I, do. I was worried I wasn't gonna uh, to like this one, but uh, well done on this one, Chris. I didn't make it. I know I like it because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm. I've drank more I know than you both drank of more you. Than both of us. Well, poor Steve. I'm trying to talk now so he can get a sip <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. Can't make him talk the whole time. But it's good if you get all my talking in before I drink too much. Mm. I think that's. I think everybody wins in that. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> to that circumstance. There's been a few shows of ours that haven't actually made it <laughs> onto uh, uh, onto the web because yeah, yeah. yeah we, we did some pre-drinking <laughs> and uh, yes, some taste testing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> There's been a couple of shows that have made it out to the web that I've been... <laughs> oh, I really like that one. <laughs> My face was a little red that episode. <laughs> so I want to ask uh, another one, just because uh, I was saying what's been happening in the last two weeks. The touchy one that people are very divided on is the new, uh, new head coach of the men's national team, uh, John Herdman, who was the... Uh, head coach of the very successful women's national team. Exactly. Is this a good thing in your guys' mind? Is it a bad thing? Is it the right time, wrong time? What the hell went wrong? Like, do, 
a lot of this we don't know, but I'm going to throw it out there. Well, having a winning coach as our coach is it can't can't be that bad. But didn't we just have one? A winning coach? True. That, that, that's what I was just about to say. We, we did just have a winning coach. So why take a winning coach away from one team to put them in another? There, there has to be something that went wrong. I personally don't know. But yeah. do you have an opinion on it? I, oh, I have lots of opinions on, <laughs> on that subject matter. For, I mean, for me, the uh, we can talk about whether or not John Herdman is going to be a good coach or not be a good coach. And that tends to be the... The, the only discussion that's out there right now about this situation. But to me, that's the smallest part of the situation. So the smallest part of, of this story is, can John Herdman coach the men? Because really, uh, it's not actually the most important part. No. I mean, he was there, right? He was successful with the women. Uh, you know, people who talk about him as a coach talk about his, his honor, his credibility, his motivational skills, his tactical awareness, his ability to build a program. And they say all the right things and the good things about him. And... Yes, those are probably all true, and yes, they will probably come to fruition within the Canadian program, within the men. So is it a good hire? I mean, sure. Absolutely. But the part that's the issue that to me is the process by which he was named the national coach. That to me is the real issue and the one that's not talked about at all. And for me, that's the problem. So, I mean, you could have, you could have named... Anybody to be the Pep Guardiola could have been the guy that they brought out at the, at the press conference to all of a sudden be the, the the head coach of the Canadian men's national team, and I'd still be like something shady went down here. Yeah. Because on you know on on Sunday Zambrano's the head coach, on Monday at lunch he's the head coach, and then by Monday at dinner he's not the head coach, and somebody else is. And, sure. You know, there's there's no process as to as to what went on behind the scenes. There's no clarity as to as to how it happened, and there's been no real discussion from Canada Soccer uh, as to why this has happened. Yeah, no one has told us anything as to why it has happened. And, and that's probably the problem as a media guy and as fans of Team Canada. We, we don't understand what caused this change. And Just, I mean, normally when you have a change in, uh, in coach, you have a press conference. Exactly. <laughs> right, that's normally the way it goes. Normally, it's a press conference, and the new coach is sitting there, and maybe the president would be there, or the technical director, or the general manager, and you'd have your statement that you would read at the beginning, saying, "This is who we've hired. This is why we've hired them, and why we think they're the right person for for the job that we have." If it was happening through a footballing association, through an FA, like we have here, you can't, you know, the CSA, we have in Canada. <laughs> normally, there would be a, a hiring process where. Yeah. People, you know it's going to happen. People would be able to put their name in the hat uh, for if they if they felt that they wanted the job. There would be some due process through which Canada Soccer interviewed people and then went and uh, spoke to different people, did some background checks on who they are, uh, you know, and had a whole process before they got to the end. Now, if the current manager who they've hired, they've always known was the, the right person because he's been in the system for so long, then the real question I have is why did you hire Octavio yeah. Zambrano 10 months ago and why wasn't John Herdman in the discussion 10 months ago for this position if, it, if it's always been known that he wanted to be the coach of the men and or, or of a men's side and it's always been known that he's the, the, the right person or the right candidate internally to, to have it come about this way is fishy but again I don't want to have that discussion right now because I don't want to turn the narrative back to John Herdman as the as the manager, because no, that, no. to me, that's not the discussion. Should have nothing to do with who because comes he's, out, a, he's a qualified who, coach. Who, who comes out the other end of this? To me, shouldn't be what the discussion's about. It, sh it should be about you know the process by which we got to there. It was not clear. It was not transparent, uh, and it you know it, it it's not good for Canada soccer that this is how we're doing business. And obviously, uh, it it. It hit a chord with a lot of people, not who the hire was, like <clears throat> you said, how it happened. And the proof of that is for the first time in I don't know how long, Canadian soccer was in international news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So if we're in international news and it's not because we won something. Yeah. <laughs> There's a problem. There's something going on. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then uh, the part that again, so, some of the things that I don't like about it is the 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 storylines that are that that, that, are, that we're getting run in the first couple of days. So we see I think like three types of storylines that are coming out, and all of them I think are really bad for Canada soccer because again they move it away from what I think should be the talking point, and that is why is Zambrano actually 
gone. Exactly. That that should be the talking point. So the first thing we have is we, I, I thought was there's there's a, a little bit of a smear campaign that was going on. There were some planted stories about who Zambrano was or wasn't about him not being a good coach or players not liking him, but there was no grounding mm -hmm. in any of those stories. There they were not actually attached to any. Uh, real players or real experiences. They were leaked from very particular places to very particular people in the media, right? <laughs> and uh, and I, and I, and and they started to run with that in a way that I think was really unfair. Because if, for example, Zambrano was released or fired or came to an agreement with Canada Soccer, again, we don't know the exact terms upon which it was uh, which it happened because that never came out. Uh, normally, in that case, any other football association around the world would actually release a statement yeah. about that. Yeah. The statement that came out from Canada Soccer was only about Herbin and what Herbin would do with one line about Zambrano being gone and nothing more about how it came about or what it had to do. So we actually don't know any part of that. The second one that really upsets me, and I want to get to this one, is the discussion about the, the, the women's coach coming to coach men's soccer. And to me, this is a nonsensical decision, uh, discussion point, and it's one that people are getting wrapped up in far too much. And again, it moves away from the real the real talking point, which should be what Canada soccer is doing, rather than can someone who's coached women coach men? Can they're now in England, it's the other direction. Can someone who coached uh, men coach women? I mean, like, yeah, because who was it? It's uh, Phil Neville, right? Yeah, it's been named the, the, the named the uh, job that Herbum was offered. Oh, it was apparently offered, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so. <sighs> To me, that's again, that's that's moving the dialogue away from the real point to start an argument somewhere else. If you pick, if you pick up a point that you know is going to blow people up a little bit, and you throw that out there in the media, and you let that sit there, everyone jumps on that. That becomes the bone in which everyone's yeah. fighting over, and yeah. then it, it shifts people away from from the other discussion. But and, and so those are the parts that have been really been bothering me. Is that there's no real discussion here, and again, and there's silence. There's complete silence from Canada Soccer. All the important people in Canada Soccer are saying nothing. Jason DeVos, who is always <clears throat> front and center and forward for everyone to hear and see, has gone completely silent and said nothing since the decision came available. I mean, last week on my Twitter feed, Jason DeVos was engaging with all my Twitter followers about having meeting them in Burlington to have coffee with them to talk about grassroots. And then now, after this thing has gone on, silence. Uh, complete silence. He won't even acknowledge that the, the same people he was taking to coffee last week to you know, e even exist. Uh, we've got nothing from Steve Reed, who's the president of Canada Soccer. I mean, we have nothing from Nick Bontis, who is the, the vice president of Canadian Soccer. So these are like, you know, three of the biggest uh, voices, usually very prominent, and they're, and they're nowhere to be seen or heard. And the question I just have is, what's, what, what are we hiding from? Like, if, if, if it's really that straightforward that you felt you hired the wrong person, that Zambrano wasn't the right hire, that you brought him in, he did a good job, but didn't do the things that you that you were looking for as a board, as an executive, as an organization. And then you wanted to retool and go in a different direction, and you felt internally you had the right candidate. Then why not just come out and say that? I mean, instead, it's it's the cover up, it's the way in which it's gone about that really just keeps leading to conspiracy theories. And guys, as Canadian like soccer fans or T is TFC soccer fans, like we we we. We live, eat, breathe, drink, and like die on like soccer conspiracy theories about everybody always <laughs> out to right. get us and ruin us. So I mean, like, we, what we need now is the leadership, like, to come out and say, "There's no conspiracy theory. Here's exactly what happened. It's pretty straightforward. He wasn't the right guy. Here's why it wasn't working for us. This is where we want to go. Here's why we want to go there. There's nothing more." Is that there. coming, or do you think we're just right. going to be moving forward and hoping for some scrap information? Down the line, I think or do I, you think they're coming out? Have they seen this backlash? Are they realizing it? Or oh, I, I think they see it. I think whoever's giving the media advice right now is very um, clearly uh, articulating to Canada Soccer: <coughs> say nothing, it will blow over. Say nothing, it will blow over. Wait it out. Plant your stories in the right places. So have. Heard. Get that fake news ready. Yo, know, I mean, but I mean, you, you guys, you, you guys saw, you know, heard it on the weekend on, uh, you know, on whatever the the, the TSN Sportsnet Bell uh, conglomerate, Bell Sportsnet conglomerate. Well, I don't even know who owns what anymore in that, <laughs> in, in, in that, in that situation, right? But you, but you guys saw that, right? You saw yeah, I watched, that was I on watched uh, the uh, the the TSN interview they did with them with uh, Wellman, Caldwell, and uh, Jack, and it it it. It felt uh, almost not rehearsed. I, that's the wrong word, rehearsed, but known. Yeah. I, I, and, and I come back to, you know, you say that I saw him. I, I hope the best for John Herdman. He's, he's, he's the coach of my national team. I, I don't want any negative. 
I, I just want to know the story. I, so watching the, 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 the John Herdman interview, I liked it because he said what he had to say and <clears throat> that's his new position and what he's got to tie up some few uh, ends on the women's side and, uh, and then get right to work with the men's side. The Herdman interview had nothing to do with how things happened, why they happened, or anything to do with the the inside stuff. Yeah, but but uh, would he know really? Would he know what well, with if, the reasoning behind? What? If one of the storylines that that's come out, uh, and again, I, I I don't think this is a real story. I, mean, <clears throat> I think this is one of the planted stories. But if one of the real story, if one of the storylines that came out is in fact true, that. He gave Canada Soccer an ultimatum because he had been offered the England job. Uh, this is one of the, so if this is in fact true that he gave an ultimatum, they had, they had an England job. Then I mean, in the interview, either with uh, James Sharman uh, on Sportsnet on the weekend or the one with the TSL that you're speaking of, I would have really loved to hear someone say, "Did you did, did you give him an ultimatum?" Right? And 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 what you know? In, in what form did you do that? And when did you present that information to Canada Soccer? When did you go to Canada Soccer and say, "If I don't get the men's job, I'm leaving." Right, because that's the story that's been leaked. So, to, and and you say, well, you know, you can't ask him that question. Well, I mean, what's the point of journalism? Like, are are we journalists or are we show ponies? Like, are we are we here just? Oh, to, we're show ponies. Well, that's what we are. <laughs> that's what we do. We're show ponies. Yeah, but, but, you know, like, 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 what, what's the point of being a, a journalist if you're not going to actually interrogate and ask critical questions? Because, no, I agree. Yeah, because that that, uh, that bring it to to regular. News. That that's what you want a journalist to do. You want a journalist in there getting the the dirty details about cursing and swearing in front of in the back rooms because because that's what you want to know because we as the public don't get to see that stuff. So you as a journalist, that's your job to get that information for us. Yeah, and we would never know that. You're right, hundred percent right about getting behind Herdman. Every Canada soccer fan wants to get behind her, but there's nothing <laughs> in him and the most angry and the most bitter and the most vile ones that are out there on, like, on social media. And they do there. exist. They, all, they do exist. And, but, but all of them, I mean, they, they, they're the ones who want to get behind her, but more than anybody yes. else. I mean, because they care so passionately about, yeah. the, about the country and about, and about the sport. And so, I mean, as soon as, and this is just my opinion, and you can take it for what it's worth or Canada soccer can take it for what it's worth. I mean, they're not watching. <laughs> you, you might be surprised. You might, you might be surprised. I want a very tight watch list right now for everything I'm saying to you. Oh, no. I mean, but and I mean, we gave you beer. Yeah, and you gave me beer. I know. Well, at least he's only halfway through it. And it's Canadian beer, though. So, it is? You know, we're, we're sure. supporting uh, domestic. But um, if, as soon as they get out in front of it, and as soon as they address the issue for exactly what it is, I think there's the opportunity for actually real growth and healing here behind Herdman. Otherwise, I do think there'll be a schism within the fan base, within the supporters groups about who forever if, who who actually wants to support him. And I'll tell you, for all the you know, I don't want to use fake news is such a weird term to use in sport, right? I don't like using it just yeah. because of who brought it up. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but for all the for all the discussion around around uh, you know players uh, you know uh, loving Herdman and not or, or players not liking uh, Octavio, you know, I have on very good authority. Uh, multiple players uh, who are currently with the, the national team that I've spoken to who are very unhappy about the situation. And it's not about Herdman, and it's not about Zambrano. It's about the process wow. It's about the process through which has happened. And so the one question they did ask is, how do you think you'll go about winning over the men's team? Or how, you know, yeah. and he gave a, like a beautiful answer. But I mean, like, when he gets in that dressing room and he goes to address all those players, none of them are going to challenge him because they want to play for their national team. That's yeah, right. none of them are going to come out and publicly say, "Oh, I don't, I don't agree with this," because then they'll never play for their national team. But there, uh, there are players right now who wear Canada, who have worn Canada, who will be unhappy with playing for John Herdman because of how the process has gone the, down, the way it went down, and that that's, I think, we've made full circle here. Is that's that's the problem? Is the 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 issue was not who, but the issue was how. And, and, you know, for some, maybe the issue is who, like some out there in the media or some out there uh, in Canada soccer fandom or, or <clears> even <throat> the players, who knows? But to me, like before we could even have the discussion of who the coach is and can this coach do it, I mean, a lot more as we talked about is like, how do, how do we get to this? It's, again, it's very, uh, you know, dictatorship style. Like it's just a decision that's made. There's no discussion about the decision. There's no transparency around the decision. Uh, we're just told that this is the new coach, even though... You know, there's no 
process by which the best person was sought out. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a, a unilateral decision was made by Canada Soccer that this is the best person, and we don't know the criteria by which that was made. Interesting stuff. Thankfully, we could drink beer while we do this. <laughs> wow, this is like the most in-depth show we've had. Normally, I agree. it's like, how was your day? You know, but it has been a crazy couple of weeks yes. in, in the uh, Canadian soccer landscape. <laughs> and historically, if you watch our show, please watch it more. But we, we do, we do love our soccer. You know, we're Toronto FC, Canada fans, and uh, we even keep our eye on our rivals with Vancouver and uh, Montreal <coughs> because we're Canadian mm -hmm. and, and we want we, we want it to grow. Yeah. Um, Thanks so much for coming. You must come back again, and we'll talk uh, uh, some Toronto FC next time or something. Maybe uh, later on, uh, once the season gets yes. started, we can talk some, hopefully, uh, CONCACAF Trump triumphs and uh, stuff like that for Toronto FC. That'd be great. This being the uh, flagship IPA from Steamworks <laughs> has thoroughly impressed me. It deserves the name flagship. Yeah, it definitely is a worthy beer of that name. I agree. So uh, thanks to them for uh, sending this to Chris. Absolutely, thank you. Steve Gennaro, Gennaro, for those who can't pronounce it correctly. <laughs> thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yes, thanks.